Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's get going. People will continue coming in, but uh, I want to get started and uh, make sure that we're on track, looking ahead to the awards at lunchtime. 39 companies nominated for the awards today. We'll find out who were the winners. Right now, I want to take a, a, a quick and kind of a quick glance at what I think of as the state of the art in terms of using technology for investor relations. Um, I think this year, for me, has been a tipping point in terms of the use of technology for IR. In the US, we saw a significant announcement out of the SEC back in er early April around uh, Netflix. They look, were looking at Netflix and what happened when the CEO of Netflix announced some information on his Facebook page that the SEC considered could be material. They investigated and they, in the end, they came out and said, well, you know what? That's okay to announce material information on Facebook if you have enough followers, if it's seen as a recognized channel, for that matter, on Twitter. So they, the SEC recognized social media as a possible channel for the disclosure of material information. This was big. This is a big turning point. We're also seeing a dramatically growing use of video conferencing including both high-end telepresence systems as well as desktop video conferencing. We really are seeing a dramatic increase in uh, companies doing new and innovative things using their websites. So I want to take you a sort of quick tour through some of the things that we're seeing, some of the data, some of the research that's coming out. Um, and this is one, one of the things that's driving it. When we asked investor relations officers in the US, where is innovation happening in invest, where is innovation happening? 31% said it's in technology. The number one area, investor outreach, they're thinking about targeting, they're thinking about uh, working with the sell side corporate access, but no, the number one area for innovation is technology. So one of the things that we asked the investment community here in Asia in our award survey this year is what do you want on corporate websites? What is, their, what is your wish list in terms of the information you'd like to see on corporate websites? So here it is, a very simple, very uh, easy list of the things that they would really like to see that maybe they're not getting enough of. Number one, presentations and transcripts. Okay, so they want the slide decks and they want transcripts of conference calls that they can easily scan through instead of having to listen to the whole audio. They want Actually, they, we, you know, speaking of guidance and speaking of the detail that company, investors and analysts want, quarterly sales by product and by region. So they want segmented information. They want it frequently updated. They want as much detail as possible. Speedier, more frequent updates and newsletters. Another one. More operating data, detailed financial information, and schedule of upcoming events. Now, just a quick look at some of the comments. I don't know if you can read these, but some of the comments that we gathered also are quite telling, quite informative about what investors and analysts want. Now, um, some of them are rather unrealistic. Maybe they're dreaming. In the top left one here, someone, an investor who says that they want to see a forum that allows investors to discuss and interact. So they would actually like to see on a company website a kind of chat board or message board where company, investors could interact. Obviously, that's not going to happen, not on a corporate website. They need to be looking at Twitter, for perhaps. They need to be going to find uh, investor message boards elsewhere. But some of these are very reasonable wishes, and some of, them, um, uh, you know, some of them are actually standard in certain parts of the world. The top middle one there, contact details for the investor relations officers. Brokers research, or at least who the brokers are, perhaps even uh, what their contact details are. An analysis of quarterly and annual results by leadership. All right, so like I said, those are actually standard details on corporate websites in Europe. You can expect to see the IRO's name and contact information. You can ex expect to see a list of analysts publishing research on the company, sometimes even with contact details. And you can expect to see some, in some format, whether it's video or whether it's written, um, or whether it's even a blog, you can see analysis of the results by the company leadership. Also, in the mid in, uh, quite reasonable, I think, in the middle here, more disclosure, financial reports, a schedule of conference calls, information about corporate governance, and environmental information. And actually, that's all fairly standard, even here in, in Asia. 
Note that a schedule of events, including conference calls and investor conferences, seems to be a very common request. And it's always become a, 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 an essential on, uh, on corporate government, on uh, investor relations websites. Now here's something interesting. We now do an annual survey of investor relations officers around the world about various parts of investor relations practice. This is kind of interesting. We asked about which uh, types of media you use to communicate with investors. And how productive are they? All right. So, you know, as to be expected, nearly 90% of companies are using an IR web page really to communicate with investors, and it's high, rated highly in terms of productivity. You can see 20% are using Twitter in some fashion worldwide. That's actually fairly high. 21%. That's fairly high. Um, it, as you're going to see, it's been confirmed in other surveys as well. So, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and so on down the down the line. One of the things that stands out here, and we're going to be discussing this more in the next session, is an IR app. Okay, so a mobile app for an iPad or iPhone. It's been slowly adopted by companies, but actually seen as really quite productive uh, in comparison to some other channels that companies are starting to adopt. So that's one, one area to keep an eye on. Now, you know, I mentioned that this year has been a tipping point in terms of social media in particular. There have been a couple of significant studies that have come out in the U.S. around this area. So the National Investor Relations Institute surveyed investor relations officers. And it's, it's, I think it's kind of interesting that NERI came out with their headline finding was that 72% of IROs do not use social media for IR. Now, this is a glass half full, glass half empty scenario, because if it was me, I would say, my God, 28% do use social media for IR. That is a pretty high rate of adoption these days. And it actually reflects what we were seeing on the previous slide in terms of 21% using Twitter and various smaller percentages using other channels. However, even with that figure, 49%, half of those who do not use it, half of those 72% do plan to reassess that in the next 12 months, okay? especially in light of the NERI announcement. Now, from a different survey, but in partnership with NERI, this is from Corbin Perception Group. Um, what about the investment community? And what they found was that 52% of investment professionals do use social media. And that is quite remarkable. Um, it's actually down a little bit, down four points since the last time Corbin surveyed this. But a vast majority of those investors using uh, investors and analysts using social media say that it has influenced investment decisions. And in light of the SEC's Netflix report, 43% say they will be using social media more. Now, another very good survey in terms of the adoption of social media by the investment community is the Brunswick survey. Brunswick has been doing this every couple of years for several years now, so they have a good sense of where things are moving. The last report, which they issued in January of 2013, is really quite remarkable. 52% of investment pros read blogs. That has actually been little changed over the last couple of years, but in two years, the number, the percentage of investment professionals reading Twitter, following Twitter, has gone from 11% to 30%. So that's quite a remarkable change in two years. 24% uh, uh, use social networks now. Deeper engagement is driving investment decisions. To fully 28%, and that's a rise of 17%. Okay, so from 11, again, from 11% of of investment professionals saying that Twitter drives investment decisions has gone up to 28%. So these are, these are some signs. You know, one of the, the reasons that invest relations officers often give for not getting into social media, for not adopting it as a communications channel in any form, is that their investors and analysts are not interested. But we're starting to see genuine evidence that they are. I want to give you a few, just a few quick examples of some of the things I see that I think are quite of interesting in terms of the gradual adoption uh, of different types of technology, social media and other tools that companies are offering on the web. Here's just a quick look at how one company, Covidian, which is our, the, Covidian has done extraordinarily well in our US award survey. They're number one in the US for the last three years in a row. And in the global top 50 that we just announced, they're number two in the world. So very, very good in terms of investor, investor relations. And they have begun using um, social media mainly to simply retweet 
uh, not retweet, I, I should say, mainly to tweet company announcements. So if they put out a press release or they make announcement in, through conventional means, they also put it up on Twitter. But furthermore, you can see in the Covidian IR channel that there are comments, for example, from Cole Lanham, the IR officer, or there's uh, comments that are included from discussions about Covidian. In this case, it was Covidian was presenting at the NERI conference. IR Hub was commenting about it, and these were retweeted in the or uh, re appeared also in the Covidian IR channel. So it's not just company announcements, but other things. Stock twits is uh, like a, a, a type of Twitter, closed, more of a closed network just for investors. Some companies have begun to use this, like Intel, for example, has really uses, uses stock twits a lot um, for their communications, okay? Um, they can, they, one of the reasons that they use it is that stock twits then is fed through a number of other channels. Um, you can see here stock twits has long appeared on Bloomberg. Another part of the tipping point that we've seen this year, I should have mentioned, is that also right around the time of the SEC announcement in April, Bloomberg began including Twitter feeds on their terminals. So for the first time, Bloomberg users could actually read Twitter feeds on their terminals. Those feeds that Bloomberg selected, starting with about 2,000, but growing all the time, but investors had the option of seeing those feeds, whether it was company CEO or particular influencers or uh, media, uh, they could see them right on Bloomberg. A lot of companies now live blog their earnings calls or live tweet their earnings calls. In this case, FedEx, uh, they use Twitter, and as the uh, earnings call proceeds, they post the, the kind of key messages from the earnings call live over, the, over Twitter. So you, can, you could be following FedEx's earning call, earnings call over your, Twitter, over your Twitter feed without having to listen to the call or to watch the webcast. Now, what I find interesting is that you know, even a lot of companies that have begun to put press release headlines onto Twitter, um, are still very, they still see it as a real danger zone, a real, an area of great risk, especially for individuals like investor relations officers or senior executives to tweet. But then there's others like Cole Lanham. So again, Covidian, the number one company in IR the last three years in a row, it's a $20 billion market cap company. Um, actually, I think they're nearly 30 billion now. And Cole Lanham is tweeting himself, all right? And as you can see, some of his tweets are not even about Covidian. Some of them are. He's, he's um, you know, he, he even jokes to a portfolio manager. He says, what possible portfolio moves could you need other than going long on Covidian? Hope you're well, have a great holiday. There's a little message he does to a portfolio manager. Um, but a lot, a lot of the times too, he's just tweeting personal things about, his, about things that he's doing watching a basketball game with his son or uh, you know, go, where he's going on his holiday, what he's seeing. It adds character and, and brings a personal touch to this investor relations officer. Another example, Pandora, the m online music uh, company. I think it's quite interesting. Dominic Pascal, the IRO there, has this is his personal Twitter feed. And see how he identifies himself. He says he's a disciple of cloud computing and emissary to Wall Street. And it doesn't say up there that he's the investor relations officer for Pandora. This is not an official Pandora Twitter feed, but look at what the symbol is. Look at what his, his, um, his, his uh, picture is. It's Pandora's stock symbol. So these investor relations officers feel very comfortable about using Twitter both for personal messages and for professional things about his company. And again, you can see some of uh, Dominic's tweets there. Some of them, actually none of these are about uh, Pandora at all but often he will talk about company news. One of the things I always tell any investor relations officer, if you haven't already done it, you know, is, this is particularly true, if you have, a, if you have a, an ADR stock symbol, for example, if you're able to go, just go to search, uh, twitter.com slash search, enter dollar sign and your stock symbol, and you instantly see all the tweets about your company. A few other things that I admire a lot when I see it on investor sites, video, um, in Canada, this is especially prevalent in Canada where we have a lot of resources companies, a lot of mining companies, gas, oil and gas companies. They have projects in far-flung places, say the very far north of Canada. Investors and analysts can't get out to see them easily. So they'll put up videos or pictures of, say, the progress of the construction of a gas plant, in this case, ARC Resources. 
Uh, every quarter, the CEO posts a video. Remember we talked about how investors wanted to see senior management discussing results? Here's a very good format for doing it. Mobile applications, of course, proliferating. Uh, in terms of senior management talking about results, the, my favorite example is Dell. It's a shame in a way that Dell's been taken private. They have such excellent investor relations office, officers. And one of the things that they do every quarter, instead of having a, a CEO or, or a CFO talking to the camera, reading a script, they do it like a little chat show. All right, so that's, the, uh, that's uh, Rob Williams, the head of IR uh, from Dell. And uh, this is him as a kind of talk show host. And he, each quarter, he does a little talk show with the CFO of Dell and one of the leaders of another operations division. I think it's fantastic. And they post it on YouTube. It's an excellent, excellent uh, way of showing senior management discussing uh, uh, the results. Here's another one, one of my favorites. This is the CEO of Cameco, their uranium mining company in Canada and Saskatchewan. And every quarter, their CEO answers questions that uh, would be the type of questions they get in investor meetings or on their conference call. And he answers them without a script, just uh, informally to the camera, and then they post them one by one so you can choose which question. Each one of them is just like a minute, a uh, minute and a half, uh, three minutes in terms of the answers, and you can choose which question you look at. Very well done. Again, not scripted, very natural. He's very comfortable. He's used to answering these questions in investor meetings and on the conference call, and he does it into the camera for this quarterly lineup of, of questions. Nestle, I wanted to tell you about, you know, they're very interesting. Uh, they actually did a, a careful look at how they're communicating, not just online, but overall. They even went on a kind of communications roadshow. They went around Europe to their top shareholders and they said, how are we doing in terms of investor relations? What would, like, what would you like to see as different or better? And they redesigned their website and one of the things they decided was to make it look a little bit like an iPad or an iPhone screen. So you've got the li little icons there. The other thing you've got that in the video there is the head of IR from Nestle. It's Roddy Child Villiers. And every quarter, he posts a new video. It appears right there on the IR homepage. That's Roddy. He'll be standing in front of some beautiful lake in Switzerland where Nestle is based. He'll be holding a Nestle drink of some kind, a Nestle, one of their products. And he's just talking for a minute, no more. And he's just saying, looking forward to seeing you at investor conferences as we travel around the Europe over the coming months. Roddy also tweets. He has become a real kind of personal and warm face of investor relations. It's not just an anonymous corporation. He is the face of IR, and he does a really good job at it. That's him in another way uh, moderating a discussion, this about uh, rural development as part of uh, Nestle's environmental sustainability communications. Um, Roddy has posted a video of a, a little one-on-one -on -one chat with uh, one of their sustainability executives. So really what, as so, you know, what I think we see with Nestle is that it's, he's really adopted social media as a way of thinking. It's a new way of communicating. It doesn't necessarily just mean Twitter. It's about thinking about how people consume information now. For example, one of the things Nestle does is a three-minute annual report. They call it a three-minute annual report. It's a three-minute video that basically sums up their corporate message. And that as they see it, that's how people now consume information, in little three-minute chunks. They don't have time to watch an hour-long video or read an 80-page report, but they do have time for a three-minute video. Here's, um, I wanted to show this, and I, I was looking at uh, the, uh, let's see if we can get this. Um, oh, I think that, we'll see if this video works. Here we go. Here's a nice seasonal message from a company that's nominated for 10 awards today. A little Christmas card from China Telecom right there on the IR homepage. Beautifully designed new IR homepage from China Telecom. You can see that little Christmas message has all the honors that it has been gathering uh, recently, including IR Magazine awards. Beautifully done. You can see right at a glance some incredible things that China Telecom is doing. They have a mobile app. They have tools arranged like icons on an iPad. They have the reports there available. They have a corporate video um, and so on. Let me uh, show you what their interactive annual report looks like, hopefully. Let's see. Hang on. 
Here's a look at China Telecom's HTML annual report. Beautifully done. And again, there's a video gallery. You can customize your annual report. This is an example of, I think, a company really going the extra mile and doing some very innovative things in terms of online investor relations. All right, that is all I wanted to do, is give you a quick overview of how I'm looking at the kinds of uh, things going on in terms of technology and investor relations from where I sit in New York, uh, from the examples I see amongst some leading companies in, in the US and in Europe, and also here in, in, uh, in Asia. Uh, China Tele Telecom is an excellent example. Right now, let me ex invite up uh, our next uh, series of presenters, including Elizabeth Sun, Dania, and Marcus Seltzer, to join me. And we're going to get into talking about really doing more with less, building an effective IR program on the right budget.